All right, so this week we're going to talk about batteries. I know, and it's an entire week of just batteries. And you would think, really? It's that big of a deal? But apparently it is because, well, every airplane, not every airplane, most airplanes have batteries in them. If it doesn't have a battery, then I guess you don't have to worry about it. If you don't pass this week's lecture on batteries, you just get one of those planes, like Evans, who has a battery, but that's... It's an afterthought. It's an afterthought. <laughs> um, so right now, the, the FAA has not gotten into, that I can tell, exotic batteries, the lithium batteries and such. So we're kind of stick with what they're going with. Although I will tell you that it seems to me that the, the trend is going back towards lead acid. So it was lead acid, then, there, then certain uh, turbine engines went towards... NICAD, and we'll get into why. And now they're saying, ah, it's too much effort. Let's just go back to lead acid. So, which is kind of a funny thing. So, we will get into that. But um, I will not get into the chemical reaction happening in batteries because to do that is like, and then it's like, what? And then it just adds complications where you don't need it to be. So, I try and keep the main thing the main thing. So, all right. So, oh, and I'm going to try something a little new here uh, with this. We'll see if it works. So, Yes. I think the military is using lithium batteries now, but we have to be super careful because if they're expanding, we have to treat them like an explosive and have a hundred foot clear radius from a certain direction of the aircraft. So probably a reason why we're not using them yet. Yeah, and, and lithium batteries. I mean, if you guys have bought a lithium battery and you've had it shipped to Amazon, you know it comes in a package that's flame proof, and they have flame proof bags now in aircraft. They want, and they ask you, right, have you taken your laptop battery out? Have you done this? You had that? So, yeah, they're, they're causing problems. Didn't the 787 use lithium batteries and that caused issues too? What? The 787, didn't they? Use yeah, I don't remember what the issue was, but. I think they were getting fires on that one building. Well, we'll see how this works. All right. Um, I figured out that I could do the this pin and make it try and work. So batteries are classified. Well, yeah, I figured it's going to do something like that. That's R. Now I'm just writing. If I've got to write really nice, then I might as well just write really nice. But R classified into two groups. <coughs> According to according to is this going to be distracting? Is it? We'll do it for a few minutes, and if you don't like it, I'll go back. According to the manner in which chemical energy chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. That's actually kind of cool. I don't know. Thank you. All right. Ooh, it even does that. It even does that. Sweet. Okay. All right. We're talking about a primary cell. That's where some of you belong. <laughs> All right. Primary cell converts chemical energy to electrical energy by directly using the chemical materials within the battery. Converts. Let's see what that did. Oh, did it. Converts chemical energy chemical energy to electrical energy <coughs> by directly using
the chemical materials within the battery. <coughs> nope. Within the battery. All right, primary cell. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's that? Can't you just use the keyboard at this point? <laughs> I could. I could just type, I suppose. That's not as fun. Yeah. It's all about having fun. <laughs> I know. You're actually paying attention. In other words, well, I mean, it's all typed out. I could just like pull up my notes and just stand there like this. But, uh, you know, I could just print this and hand it to you. In other words, the chemical action alone creates electricity. Or I could do text to speech. Um, in other words, um, the chemical action. chemical action alone creates alone creates electricity examples whatever it's not how I did my outline Examples. <clears throat> well, give me an example. No. 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 So we're talking about some sort of battery that eats itself up. And once it's done, you throw it away. Alkaline batteries. They call them flashlight batteries. I, it's a bad name anymore because it's like, well, anything could be a flashlight battery if it operates a bulb. So, all right. So, um, what do we call them? Alkaline, Alkaline batteries. batteries. I don't know. I didn't write that. A L K A L I N E. Alkaline. Yeah. Oh, did it have spell check? That'd be awesome if I could just scribble out a word kind of close to it and I can guess. Sir. But I'm trying my best and I can't even guess what I'm writing. So, examples alkaline batteries. Um, so a primary cell it uses them up. <coughs> it cannot be charged. Cannot be recharged. That is called a primary cell. <laughs> Does spell too. Well, then what do you think I wanted to spell? <laughs> there, recharge. See? Cannot be recharged. So a non rechargeable battery is called a primary cell. Okay. What well, would be the next thing? Secondary cell. <clears throat> That's where you go when they're doing a shakedown of your current cell. All right, um, secondary cell. No, I swore I wouldn't go back. So, must be charged. Must be charged with electrical energy before it can convert chemical energy to electrical. In other words, must be charged first. What must be charged first? Secondary, secondary cell. cell. What's an example of that? Lead acid. Lead acid battery, the battery in your automobile. Rechargeable flashlight battery. So, rechargeable. <laughs> <laughs> must be charged. with electrical energy must be charged with electrical energy before it can convert chemical energy
two electrical. In other words, in other words, it must be charged first. <coughs> Example. often referred to as a storage battery. Often referred to as a storage battery. Uh, let's see, examples. Okay. Lead acid battery. Lithium, NICAD. Lead acid battery, uh, buttery. That's the second <laughs> time it's done that, isn't it? Oops. We're just going to go to buttery. It's going to do it again. Battery. Okay. Uh, okay. I actually put example, I put, um, <coughs> let me say storage battery, example, I put like car battery so we can be very specific. It's like the battery in your car. Uh, how about the battery in, in, in his car? Yeah. Tesla. Is that a storage, is that a primary or a secondary? Secondary. Secondary because it needs to be charged first. Okay, so in aircraft, in the batteries we're going to talk about. We have the lead acid. What's the other battery we're going to be dealing with? NICAD. Spelled many different ways, but an I C A D is kind of a common way of doing it, like that. Ooh, is it? That's probably right. People say N I C D. Is that the Yeah. So I do like that. Uh, all right. So that is our <coughs> secondary. Um, let's see, we got this. Batteries are further classified into two subgroups. Batteries are further Well, I can definitely speak where my spelling needs or my, my penmanship needs uh, are further classified. We really like that word, butteries. I hate C trying to read my writing. What if, what if it starts like using obscenities and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> further classified into two subgroups. Just so you know, technically, you're not supposed to use like the number two in a sentence. <clears throat> it's supposed to be spelled out T W O. So, at least didn't call me on that one. All right, uh, the wet cell. The wet cell. <clears throat> that. What is a wet cell? Utilizes liquid chemicals. Typically an electrolyte. I think it would not typically, but always be some sort of, it would be called an electrolyte in that. And so it literally has liquid sloshing around in it. What is an example of that? Your lead acid battery in your car has that to some extent. There are different, I should say, we'll get into it. There are varying degrees of how much liquid you put in it. So the aircraft battery that I took out of my aircraft, the pink one that you guys are messing with, the gill, that is definitely referred to as a flooded battery. You take the caps off and you could look in there and there's liquid sloshing around inside of there. You dump it all out. 
let it go down the drain. Put some new stuff in. <laughs> uh, you don't do that. Um, and, and the new one I put in has liquid, but it's an absorbed glass match style, which doesn't have caps on the outside. You don't add electrolyte. You don't open it up. You don't look in it. You can. We'll get into that. Um, but that's a wet cell, which would mean the other type would be dry cell. And that uses a chemical paste. So it, it unlike the, uh, it's actually a valve regulated battery that I put in mine. It does have liquid in it. It's just, back in the old day, they used to call them maintenance free batteries when they sold them for cars. I don't think they call them that anymore because probably somebody got sued because they still need maintenance. But those batteries, basically what they did is they took a flooded battery they put a cap on the top that when they the batteries bubble, we'll talk about that, and it releases moisture that it would just go up into the caps, collect in the caps and drip back down. And so the thought was that's maintenance free, you never had to put water in it. Well, that's not true because it still manages to get out. So uh, the battery that I have in my aircraft now, you are not supposed to open it. If you open it up, you void it out and it's not supposed to be done. So that would, I, and it's definitely not maintenance free. We'll talk about that. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, that didn't work. So they don't do that anymore. At least call them maintenance free. They got to maintain them. But anyway, dry cell literally is like the batteries in, that I just showed you, the alkaline or rechargeable AA, any AA, nine volt, you know, little batteries like that. They're definitely are not shake it and listen to liquid in there. They're, it's a dry paste. So a dry cell utilizes a chemical paste. And that's basically like, like I said, paste. Posty. Got to work on that A paste. All right. Let's talk about some terms here. Terms. Terms and conditions. By looking at the screen, you agree to the following terms and conditions. I saw everybody look, so you agree. <clears throat> Electrolyte. Electrolyte. Hey, good, thank you. All right, that is basically Gatorade. A solution. Solution of water. Told you you could drink it. Water and chemical compounds. Compounds that will conduct an electrical current. No longer <laughs> That is an electrical current. And electrical current. Well, why is that not Gatorade? Isn't that what the commercial says? Why is this not working? There we go. Sorry. <laughs> well, I've watched the commercials. I mean, NFL started this week. I didn't watch any, but I watched a little. But isn't that what the Gatorade says? It's like it's got electrolytes. You recharge you. It, it and that's. I mean, that is what electrolyte is. So it's going to help the synapses fire in your brain, muscles, or something. I don't know. A lot of salt, actually. Yeah, it's not the sugar, it's the salt that bugs me in it. So, so it's a lot of salt, so what does salt water do? Dehydrates. Conducts current. Conducts current. So, I'm not trying to push Gatorade on him, I'm just saying. It sounds an awful <laughs> lot good. So, example. Can we just supercharge with drinking battery? You're just drinking ocean water? <laughs> yes, drinking ocean water is fine. Uh, example. <laughs> example, let me see, sulfuric acid in water.
sulfuric acid and water. And or in? <clears throat> sulfuric acid and water. Well, read the book. I don't think it's also in sulfuric acid and water. It's the same thing. You have sulfuric acid, water, put them together. It is in, it is and, it is. Okay. Do not, do not put water in sulfuric acid. Yeah. Put sulfuric acid in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not well, that's what it says. It's 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 it'll it's create a localized chemical reaction if you put the water in the sulfuric acid, where if you put the sulfuric acid in the water, it's more. I'm not kidding. It's inside the book. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, hot. it's really hot. Yeah. 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 You were just that. You never said he didn't believe it. I know. Yeah. But it was just like really intense. I was like, oh. Which book is that? The, 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 the general? We're reading so many books and not even. <laughs> I'm not familiar with this. So if you take water and you have a thing of water and you pour pure sulfuric acid into it, you're going to have a chemical reaction. No, well, because if it's primarily water, you're diluting it so much, but if you take pure sulfuric acid and pour a cup of water into it, like a gallon to the cup, it it stays very very high concentration but it creates a very exothermic reaction so yeah. it can be it, so now it's exothermic it's going to bubble it's going to splash and now you have 99% sulfuric acid splashing into you instead of 2% yeah you think about like a drop of water in the sulfuric acid will create the chemical start the chemical reaction yeah. but a drop of sulfuric acid in a gallon of right. water is going to be way okay less. All right, an ion. What is an ion? Well, is it positive or negative? An ion or cation? An atom. An ion. Just an ion. There you go. It could be either. That has lost. That has... Well, I don't even like this. The atom that has, I should say lost or gained oh yeah I did write that lost or gained <laughs> you guys are so so easily amused it's wonderful <laughs> Oops, that was one. I think mean, all I can do is misspell something. You guys are like cracking up. Want to see a joke? So. <laughs> <laughs> one or more. <laughs> I know. Do it again, do it. Hit the three. <laughs> now do it with the five. <laughs> Pretty much. Electrons. A positive, positive ion has what with an electron? Has all right, lost. Oops, that's not gonna come out right. I want to say and. has lost an electron. A negative ion All right. So um, you know the, uh, the fun of, of, of watching this thing operate notwithstanding, is this working better with uh, digital like that? Well, that was the point. <laughs> it's also what? I said that notwithstanding. You gotta get used to that word because they use notwithstanding in uh, FARs a lot. All right, let's see. Electrodes. The thing you like? 
Yes. <laughs> that is the metal, for lack of a better word, or to be very basic, the metal in the cell. <laughs> Why do I feel that you have seen the inside of a brig? <laughs> I bleed it. <laughs> Where's my lawyer? You get one? All right. All right, I have anode and cathode in here. I'm not going to write them for a very good reason. I personally struggle with the terms anode and cathode because it's something I kind of had to like self teach. And so I got, I have a lot, I have a pretty good library of things that I've, I go to to write all these notes and figure things out and, and uh, bring you really good information and, and, you know, keep up on it. And when I have three books that can't agree on what an anode and a cathode is, I'm not going to bother you with it. So, and the FA doesn't ask you, and as far as I can tell, it really doesn't seem to matter what you call an anode or a cathode, uh, especially at our level of doing stuff. So I just like, don't worry about it. So that's one less thing you gotta deal with. All right. All right, so battery theory. How does a battery work? What's going on in there? Positively charged one side, negatively charged the other side. Cells trying, electrons trying to get from one to the other. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Oops. Right, right. Wrong button. That is pretty much it. Batteries work by creating positive ions on one plate, which means that positive ion it is. Short electrons with uh, negative ions in another plate, which means they got extra electrons. Neither one of them are happy about this. So what do the electrons want to do? They want to equalize. And so the negative plate has extra electrons. Positive plate has short electrons. They want to equalize in the worst way. So you have sticking out of it, you have Terminals. terminals or electrodes, terminals, and if you put a wire from one to the other, what are the electrons allowed to do? Flow, Flow. equalize. That's a battery. So, all right. So, battery theory. Buttery theory. Oh, now it's a battery. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Batteries. Batteries work by creating positive ions on one plate. Work by creating positive ions on one plate. with negative ions on another plate. <coughs> when the plates are connected, oops. Don't try and correct something. Plates are connected. I could just type it. Nah, I don't like doing that. When the plates are connected uh, with a conductor, with a conductor, what happens? Flows. Current flows, or the electrons want to equalize. want to equalize, which creates electron flow.
which creates electron flow. Oh, I've got some silly examples here. <clears throat> Looking around, I guess everybody can. Everybody can do this one. You have the balloon and the hair. Yeah. What's that? I, I was making sure. I was, can't, cannot stop writing between sentences. So B A L L O O N. Is that I spell it right? B A L L. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to spell. Oh, did you mean to spell balloon? Yes, I did. Balloon and hair. All right. All right. Balloon and hair. All right. So you take a balloon and you rub it on your hair. What happens? Yeah, but why static electricity? What is that? What's happening? You're creating a charge. A charge. Explain this charge. Um, so you rub a balloon on your hair. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, you got it. All right, so let's see. As balloon is rubbed, as balloon is rubbed, rubbed on hair, balloon is rubbed on hair, let me see. Um, electrons from hair, should have brought in a balloon. Anybody have a balloon? Oh, yeah, I carry a balloon with me all the time. Probably has one in his wallet. Uh, <laughs> all right. As, uh, as balloons rubbed on hair, electrons from hair transfer. Trans no, electrons from. One of those is wrong. Um, hair transferred to balloon. There we go. They're the balloon. All right, so balloons rubbed on hair, electrons from hair transfer to balloon. So the balloon now is a what charged? Negative. Let's see, electron is rubbed hair on hair, electrons from hair transfer to balloons. Which one has more electrons now? Balloon. 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 So what does that tend to leave your hair doing? Looking like a rock star. Propelling itself. So it kind of starts sticking. Have you ever seen a little, especially blonde head hit kids, when you go down a slide, because blonde hair I think is much finer, and they go down, they go down a slide and they get to the end of the slide and their hair is like, <laughs> right? Because the, they slid down the slide. You ever seen that? Okay, kids slide down the slide, and uh, well, my days they were metal slides and they were 800 degrees. That was more fun. But uh, <laughs> so they're rubbing down the plastic slide. They're transferring electrons into the slide. <laughs> Their hair goes straight out because now it's missing electrons and it's being attracted to everything. These electrons are trying to equalize themselves. Of course, me being the dad, reach down, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> Ground them out, shock the living hell out of them. What does that shock do? Where is that coming from? Your electron transfer. I'm transferring them. So if I have any positive ions in me, and they, um, see they're deficient, so I'd be negative. So yeah, deficient. So yeah, it's equalizing. Those electrons are transferring. Transferring your negativity to your children. Yes, that I'm good at, trust me. All right, so let me see. Finish that off. Uh, balloon uh, gains, balloon has an excess of electrons. Balloon has an excess of electrons. Of electrons. Um, let's see. Hair loses electrons. That's loses. I want loses with one O. Hello. Loses electrons. And they want to equalize. So, what does a balloon do? Boom, sticks to the wall. Why? Because Opposites attract. Opposites attract. There we go. I like that one. And the hair sticks straight out. Having a hair bed do. So yeah, let me see. One item has electrons. The other electrons want to equalize. All right. Oh, these are fun. So um, so that's, I mean, we call it static electricity, but it's, it's really, you just created a very small battery. 
it doesn't do a whole lot, but something has an excess of electrons, something has a subtraction of electrons, they want to equalize, and that's kind of what they're doing. All right. Um, early examples. There's no current, f yeah, I suppose you had a, oh, I don't know, it depends on, if it wasn't much static electricity, I think a voltmeter would actually discharge across there. You'd have to have one that, like, reads the highest and stays up. Yeah, so yeah, early examples, oh, this is a fun one, so I may not, uh, like, write all this out, but, uh, oops, I didn't want to do that, so we're getting used to it, all right, there we go, hey, um, we have Luigi Galviani, ever heard of galvanization? That's where this comes from. Oops, and I stopped. Can't do that. It is L U I G I. Luigi. Ooh, very good. G A L V A N I. This is E X P. In 1791, why'd you do that? Oh, numbers lock. Not a test question. Don't. If you haven't figured it out by now, I don't ask stuff like that. All right. So I'm not gonna. Uh, I'll just put the key thing here. Frogs. All right. So. <laughs> Luigi placed these frog legs, he's working with frogs, this is true, uh, these, these frog legs in a brine solution. What is brine solution? Salt. Salt. Salt solution. And he hung them by a copper wire. Now, it just, I guess it just so happened that that's the wire he had was copper. So here he's got these frog legs in a salt solution. Salt solution is somewhat like what we already talked about. Electrolyte. Electrolyte, which allows current to flow. All right, and so he has a scalpel made out of metal. Well, so is the copper's metal, but made out of iron. So we have a dissimilar metal. So every time he touches the frog legs with the iron scalpel covered in electrolyte hanging by a copper wire, two dissimilar metals, which have a positive and you know, dissimilar metals, which when you have dissimilar metals in a um, solution, they tend to want to make a battery, the leg would twitch. So Mr. Luigi, being the brilliant guy that he was, theorized that electricity was produced with frog legs. <laughs> I get right out of the book. I can show it to you. So yeah, not so much. So um, uh, yeah, we can just write that. Frogs produced electricity. <laughs> All right, frogs produce electricity. That would be a really good question. I should. Too bad it's not on the test. I know. What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Alessandro, what's his last name? Volta. Yeah. Volta. Alexander Volta. Uh, this is in the 1800s, so, I mean, just a few years later, in the 1800s, he figured out electricity was a result of the chemical action between the copper and iron in salt water. So, figured out, figured out. Um, I don't know, these, these guys were cooking or something like that? They were like, yeah, just poke the frog leg. Your hands uh, eat frog leg. Electricity well, was... What, what produced, what forced Galvani to test on the French? Result. Because um, <laughs> he's Italian. Understandable. Yeah. Of the chemical, uh, let me see what I want to write here. The, the chemical action between copper and iron. Copper and iron um, in the salt water.
I don't know, man. These guys are freaking smart, if you ask me. I was just listening to the radio, and I forget what year it was. Some guy, you know, sometime B.C. had basically figured out the circumference of the Earth when everybody else is still saying it's flat. He's like, oh, no, I figured out the circumference. And they figured out he's actually pretty damn close based upon, you know, the angle of this and that. And I'm like, Shh, I use GPS to get to my house from here. I mean, it's... <laughs> Turkey through Israel or something like that, and looking at the sun. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. It. I, something of that sort, yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I listened to Armstrong and Getty, if you guys, that's where I get half yeah, my crap. Then, then the church didn't like him too much after that. No, nah, then they burned him up yeah, stake, so <laughs> I don't have a problem. All right. Anyone who said that um, okay, so then, oh, it's past, past break time, so. Then, then we'll go on break, then we'll figure out what I have to say.